There are several steps in the process of learning technically difficult passages. And the first, of course, is make sure that you have gotten the rhythm elements all taken care of. You understand how to do the rhythms. Go through the fingerings, make sure you know the right fingerings and the right note names. But what I'm going to show you right now is what do you do to increase the speed? How can you work on a passage besides just playing it through a hundred times, a hundred times over from beginning to end? What can you do to give yourself a little bit of an edge in learning a passage and learning it technically faster? I'm going to demonstrate for you a practice procedure on how to break down a difficult passage and how to learn it and learn it really well the first time. And a lot of young players will look at a passage of music or they practice their music, they just play through it once or twice and go from beginning to end and think that's enough. Well, we, you know, once we get going, we really need to take those difficult passages and concentrate on them individually. I'm going to take a couple passages from Adagio and Rondo by Francois Devillon. And this is published by Southern. It's a piece I really, really like a lot and I highly recommend you to, to look at it and play it. I think it's a wonderful piece. And the first passage I want to look at is at the very end of the piece at measure 145. Rondo section of this is marked at a dotted quarter note equals 80. But here at the end, I want to push the tempo to, to get a big flourish at the end and make it exciting. So I'm pushing up to 92. Now, this makes it difficult to get this time pattern involved here and get it to be very, very precise. So what I want to do is not just teach you this one passage. I'm going to use two examples from this piece. But the basic principles are the same for breaking down any passage of music that you have in any kind of piece. What you want to do is take the various elements, the couple of different elements that are within the passage, and practice them separately and slowly until you're comfortable with them, and then gradually speed it up. So I'm going to take this passage, and you can go ahead and look on the screen, and I'll show you how I'm breaking this up and what elements I'm practicing separately. The first thing that you should do with a passage like this is just play through the notes. Get the right rhythms. Here it's all a steady rhythm, so the rhythms are not a difficult thing. But make sure you're working and get the articulations in their basic form before you move on and set the metronome or anything. Make sure that your fingers are comfortable moving to the notes that are in the passage before you start setting a metronome to it. Then, your next step would be to set the metronome at an extremely slow tempo to where you just practice it to make sure that you're starting your whole practice session out being very regimental with the metronome. I want to identify the things that in the passage that might give me problems or things that are similar and things that are different. When I look at this passage, passage specifically, I see slurs and staccato. And what I'm going to do is break down and separate the slurs from the staccato. What this does is it leaves a note out of the passage, gives my mind time to think. And it just needs that fraction of a second to be thinking ahead at what the next note is or what the next pitch is. So once I've got that down, I'm going to go ahead and start my metronome. Now I'm going to start at a fairly fast metronome marking, which is 72 to the dotted quarter note, but I've already practiced this and learned that, so I'm just going to go ahead and start a little bit faster than maybe you should learning a passage the first time. The staccato notes. I'm going to play the downbeat and the upbeat as well, but include the staccatos but leave the slurs out. Once you feel comfortable with that, what you should do is go ahead and set the subdivision and divide it into two. And then again, the same staccato passage with the downbeat with a subdivision of two. Put the metronome on the even subdivision of the beat. I'm going to go ahead now and put it all together and play one measure first with the metronome, making sure I line up in the second measure on the downbeat, and then adding both measures at the same time. <laughs> When you set your metronome up, just move it up to the next 
number that's on your metronome. If you have a digital metronome, it's really neat because you can get all the numbers in between. Mine jumps pretty big from 72 to 76, but if you have that digital, it'll really help you just push it a little bit. Now, when you go up to that next metronome mark, go through the same procedure again. Start with the slurs, hit the staccatos, put the subdivision on there, and then put it all together, taking it in small chunks and making it bigger each time. Now, after practicing and practicing this passage, I'm able to get it up to 92 to the dotted quarter note. What I'm going to discuss is in the rondo once again at major 49. We still have this triplet subdivision or groups of six with each beat being divided into three, but here we've thrown in a grace note, and this makes this passage really, really cumbersome at a fast tempo. The ultimate tempo here is a little bit slower because we're going back to our circa 80 for the dotted uh, quarter note that happens at the beginning of the rhyme. I'm first going to play this passage at 49 for you all the way through so you have an idea what it sounds like first. What you need to make sure of is to practice the grace note first. If you practice this passage without the grace note in it and learn all six of the notes and add the grace note later, it really throws it off a lot. And so really practice the grace note first. So you're going to have to start on the upbeat here. So get your metronome going and practice each one of these passages on just the, most of the grace notes separately at a slow tempo. My set metronome is set at a dotted quarter note equals 60. Make sure you're comfortable with both of those. Then add the end of each of the beats going to the next downbeat. Then once you're comfortable with that, start with the first part of this beat going just to the end of the beat with the grace note. Once you get all that going, Add the whole first beat, the B to the A, and then the A to the G, and then the whole major. And then, of course, do the entire procedure at a faster metronome marking. Put in the subdivisions just like you did before, and then soon you'll be all the way up to where it needs to be.